Good afternoon. I uh, will call to order now the um, July 6th meeting of the City Salina City Commission. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Larson? Here. Commissioner Arpke? Here. Commissioner Angel? Here. Commissioner Jennings? Here. Commissioner Peck? Here. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Nation, At this time is the Citizens Forum. Citizens Forum is where anyone from the public can come up and speak on anything not on today's agenda. If you will please come forward and give us your name and address. If not, we will proceed with awards and proclamations. Item 4.1, the month of July 2009 as Recreation and Parks Month in the City of Salina. Hank Boyer, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board Chair, will read the proclamation. Good afternoon, Mayor Larson, City Commissioners. July is Recreation and Parks Month, a proclamation by the National Recreation and Park Association. Public parks and recreation systems are dedicated to enhancing the quality of life for millions of residents in communities around the world through recreation programming, leisure activities, and conservation efforts. Parks, recreation activities, and leisure experiences provide opportunities for young people to live, grow, and develop into contributing members of society. Create lifelines and continuous life experiences for older members of the community generate opportunities for people to come together and experience a sense of community and pay dividends to communities by attracting business and jobs and increasing housing values. As we observe Recreation and Parks Month, we recognize the vital contribution of employees and volunteers in parks and recreation facilities. These dedicated supporters keep public parks clean and safe for visitors, organize youth activities, provide educational programming on health, nutrition, first aid and gardening, advocate for more open space and better trails, and fundraise for local improvements. They ensure that parks and recreation facilities are safe and accessible places for all citizens to enjoy. Therefore, with the National Recreation and Park Association, the Salina Parks and Recreation Department, and the City of Salina, Kansas, does hereby proclaim the month of July as Recreation and Parks Month. We call upon park and recreation supporters to join us in recognizing the importance of our nation's parks and recreation facilities and to learn more about how to support the places that bring our communities a higher quality of life, safer places to play, and healthy alternatives through recreation programming for everyone. We do also resolve that during Recreation and Parks Month, all citizens enjoy what their community has to offer by taking part in their favorite sports, visiting the outdoors, spending time with family and friends, or just relaxing. Signed this 6th day of July, 2009, by Lucy Larson, Mayor. So, even though I know there are so many things happening in this town and all our parks and the wonderful play day in the park that just happened on Saturday, is there anything else that you'd like to specifically call to our attention? Well, of course. On July the 2nd through the 5th was the Grand Slam Baseball Tournament at East Crawford Recreation Area. July the 4th, we did have play day in the park and there was over 5,000 5, hot dogs given away. Uh, we have our every Thursday entertainment. That's entertainment in uh, the park at the Eric Stein stage. It starts at 8 o'clock. And this week's performance is by the Sharp Dressed Man Azizi Top Tribute Band. Uh, July the 17th through the 19th, the ASA State Fast Pitch Softball for 12 and under girls will be at Billbrook Park. There will also be an adult slow pitch softball tournament at East Crawford Recreation that same weekend. On July the 24th through the 26th is the state men's fast pitch softball at Bill Burke Park. And that weekend also is the men's d &E state slow pitch tournament and the women's D slow pitch tournament at East Crawford. It's a busy weekend. We have a lot of shelter reservations, a lot of outdoor weddings. Uh, on July the 24th and 26th also is a lead uh, sled car show at Thomas Park and I want to mention that we have a month and a half of the old pool and we're going to have a grand closing on August the 16th and listen for more details on that. Great. 
Thank, Thank you. you. I've got a signed proclamation for you. We have no public hearings or items scheduled for a certain time, so I'll go on to the consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of June 22nd, 2009. Item 6.2, approve the minutes of June 24th, 2009. Item 6.3, approve the minutes of June 29th, 2009. Item 6.4, resolution number 096643, appointing Brian Richardson and Russell Profit to the Business Improvement District Number 1 Board of Advisors. Does anyone, does any commissioner wish to ask a question or pull anything from the consent agenda? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Mayor, I'd move we approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Development business. Item 7.1, application number Z09-3, requesting a change in zoning district classification from Saline County AG to R1 and PC2 on a 10.97 acre tract of land located in the northwest corner of Crawford Street and Holmes Road. Sub item 7.1A, first reading ordinance number 09, 10,506. Mr. Andrew. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, the Planning Commission, City Commission, and City Staff have been spending quite a bit of time in this area this year, and I thought I'd just give you a brief refresher about where things stand with the various properties. Back in March, you considered a request from three landowners to annex four separate properties into the city limits, and these properties start at Presbyterian Manor and work their way east along the north side of Crawford, and they're owned by Todd Welsh, the First Christian Church, and Landmark Development. And the primary purpose of that area being annexed, which includes 61 acres, was to make the area on the east side of Home Ro Holmes Road contiguous to the city limits and also allowed all those owners to coordinate and cooperate on the design of future utility extensions in that area. Uh, you recently approve the zoning change on first reading for the northeast corner of Holmes and Crawford. That would be landmark developments property and a preliminary plat of that property has been approved. Uh, Mr. Welsh, the applicant in this case, has a property that's adjacent to Presbyterian Manor. A rezoning and preliminary plat application were filed on that, but those are still under review because there's some drainage challenges over there. <coughs> this particular property um, has a preliminary plat that was approved on June 16th, the last Planning Commission meeting, and it's now coming forward for your consideration on first reading of a zoning change. And if this is approved today, then the next steps would be for the engineer working for Landmark Development and for Mr. Welsh to come up with final design and cost estimates for extending infrastructure out to this area. When the Planning Commission looked at the uh, proposed plat for the Welsh edition, the preliminary plat, they uh, recommended that the applicant be allowed to deviate from the proposed alignment of Holmes Road and Brookwood Lane that's shown in the master plan. And that had a curve, curve street to it and a traffic circle. And uh, the plat that was approved had a, just a 90 degree intersection with Brookwood and Holmes Road and its present alignment. Planning Commission also recommended that the city take the lead on the design, development of cost estimates, and developing a financing plan for Holmes Road uh, that runs between these two properties. Um, Holmes Road is a little unusual that it's a completely unimproved roadway, and if we have city development on both sides, then they'll have to come up with a plan for reconstructing that to city standards. But the application that you have in front of you today is for residential zoning on the north, roughly eight acres, and for C2 commercial zoning on the corner, and that would contain about three acres. There's a total of 18 residential single-family building lots proposed in this application. Um, 
the uh, C2 district is a neighborhood shopping district and it would be very similar in character to what you see at the corner of Marymount and Crawford in terms of its layout and the types of uses that would be allowed. Um, this particular piece of property is bisected by a ridge line so the north half drains north, the south half south, uh, goes south to Crawford and Holmes intersection so it has two different uh, drainage basins and actually quite a bit of slope to it. It's not contiguous to any development right now except for the First Christian Church. There's water lines in Crawford and Brookwood. Uh, they can be extended and tied together to form a looped water system and uh, then the sewer service would be a connection to the interceptor sewer line that's east of Holmes Road. So we're directly east of First Christian Church, directly west of the proposed Wheatland Hills addition. And so what is proposed here would be compatible with what's to the west as well as what landmark development is planning across the street. The C2 would be an isolated pocket of commercial zoning, but it, um, the Planning Commission and City Commission have historically not wanted Crawford to be stripped out with commercial zoning. and so the corner locations were identified as appropriate locations for some commercial development. Um, again, as far as water and sewer, it's going to take coordination in the layout and design between this property and uh, Landmark Development's property on the east side of Homes to make all this work. Um, again, we mentioned that the future design and financing of Homes Road is an important issue and that will be addressed in more detail in the review of final plats. The Planning Commission reviewed this request and recommended that it be approved subject to satisfactory platting of the property and then three conditions that related to development of the commercial site which means that there's no real plan for that corner right now but as one is developed that plan would be presented to the Planning Commission for their review prior to any development occurring. So if you agree with that recommendation on the zoning, this would be approval of zoning on first reading. Second reading would not come back until there was a final plat of the property. And by that time, there should be plans for Holmes Road, cost estimates, and a design for serving this area. So with that, I'd be open to any questions the commission might have. Questions of Mr. Andrew? I believe the applicant is present here also if you have questions of him. If not, I'll open it up to public comment. Mayor Larson, City Commissioners, my name is Todd Welsh, 221 South Morris, the developer of the property and uh, would be available for any questions that you have. Uh, this particular property has been very interesting to work with and uh, the way I like to think of it is it's, uh, it's like building a puzzle but not having a cover to the box with all the infrastructure <laughs> um, that we've been working with and to bring you up uh, to date a little bit and he touched, Dean touched on it, but um, without city staff and Dean and Mike and Martha and Dan and Gary's team and, and Wayne really sitting down with all the adjoining owners. This I don't know how this would go forward. So uh, thank you to city staff for all of the extra work and, and for Jason allowing the extra time for his staff to work on this. Uh, it is uh, in the comprehensive plan, the growth to move that way. I don't see anywhere other than maybe some south uh, of where we're going to grow next as a city. And if we want to continue to grow to move this forward, um, this is kind of the area that's been um, looked at to move forward. So with the help of um, Darvin Dent and the other properties all putting there, hopefully we come to you soon with a really nice plan with the paving of Holmes Road and extending of Crawford and some real nice parks uh, out in that area that we can extend uh, the city of Salina going east and make it a nice development. So do have any questions if you have any. Questions from the commissioners? Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission for action. 
Mayor, I'd move we adopt ordinance number 09-10506 requesting a change in zoning district classification from Saline County Ag to R1 and PC2 on a 10.97 acre tract of land located at the northwest corner of Crawford Street and Holmes Road. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt on first reading ordinance number 09-10506 requesting a change in zoning district classification agriculture to R1 and PC2 on the northwest corner of Crawford Street and Holmes Road. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Administration. Item 8.1, award of contract for the Wayfinding Sinus Streetscape and Entryway Enhancement Project, number 05-1550. Mr. Stack. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. I had a little spreading out to do, so Mike said I could just sit here, so we'll try it from here today. Um, as we talked about last week in a study session, this is the we have a, a good, a successful bid here for the award of our wayfinding project. Um, the project was first envisioned in 2003, so for many years this has been worked on by a lot of city staff and a lot of the community that's been involved in it. So we, I guess I'm here as a final presenter of it, but a big thanks goes out to all the people who have gone before me here because this was a, a massive undertaking and we're hopeful to try to get this built this year. Um, as we talked about last week, some of the questions that were raised were, um, let's see, in, in regards to the cost of the utility poles, um, we did contact uh, West Star <coughs> to talk about that further, and we could possibly work something out with them. However, KDOT cannot participate in that cost. It's not com Since it's not competitively bid, they cannot participate in the cost, and so they're willing to participate in the cost that we currently have. So um, it would be a probably not financially advantageous to us unless they could reduce the cost by more than half so we didn't feel like that was a great avenue to go down we can still look into it further if you'd like um, but that is definitely an alternate bid on this so we'll talk about that in a little bit secondly we talked with Bryant and Bryant uh, they talked about the size of the poles they're able to get so with some coordination with um, the artist in this case it would be Patty Banks we have talked with them in the past about the size of the poles and, and you know how big they are at the bottom versus how big they are at the top. Basically, they're a tree, so a tree is bigger at the bottom than the top, so that you have to look at the poles that you get. And is a diameter pole going to be okay if we get a shorter pole or a longer pole and cut it in two? Those are, those are two things that we really have to work out with the artist that could be done and could save us some money. Brian Bright is willing to work with us on those things. Um, so those, those we did come up with depending on the size of the poles they get and the size that they are when we get them and uh, we could possibly look at reducing some costs there that is a possibility secondly we uh, contacted the airport authority they're the the main um, group around here we know that deals with wind socks they deal with them a lot and, <laughs> and on a large scale so they replace their wind socks approximately f every four months due to fading now fading is very uh, particular when it, with an airport windsock. They have to be very bright and, and they have to make sure they get them replaced every approximately four months. I talked with Kenny Beaker and he talked with his maintenance guys and, and discussed how that works, but approximately every four months now, the longevity of a windsock will last longer depending on how long you leave it out there, weather, how long do you want to tolerate some fading or a lot of fading or minor fading. I mean, you know, if we actually changed them out every so often, then they wouldn't necessarily need to be, um, they wouldn't fade as much. So we could recycle some every other, I mean, if there's all kinds of options on wind socks. So they will last longer. I guess I wanted to ensure, but we're not sure how long. I mean, it depend on, depending on the weather and how much fading we want to deal with. So it's, it's a little bit of an experiment, but wind socks definitely were part of the art and the poles uh, for this project. And we looked into, I guess the maintenance on them. These are only going to be 12 foot tall, so we should be able to replace them fairly easily, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get pretty good at it before we're done with this. Um, some of the other questions were the attachments we provided here. I, I tried to attach about everything that was relevant to this project. So just going through some of those. Um, 
The first attachment, this is first. Well, actually, the first page is kind of a, a location sketch. It's Crawford and Ninth, or Crawford and I, and I thirty, Crawford and I thirty five, Ninth and I seventy, and then downtown. Second page is the typical signs in the downtown area. The orange will be the downtown sign. The blue would be the non downtown sign. Third is our kiosk. This is something city staff kind of came up with to try and um, put downtown, basically, that shows the, the parking lots, where you are, what is near you. And so that's uh, the picture of that. The fourth page is actually where the signs are going to be located. As you can see, the concentration is there's a lot of signs going in downtown. Quite a few along Crawford. We are finishing out the whole Crawford corridor from east to west. Both sides of the city will be covered all through the city. The 9th Street corridor, we're only really addressing the top, the northern part of the city. So there's only there's really only three signs on the 9th Street corridor that are specifically for 9th Street, around the Broadway intersection mostly. Um, in the next phase, we will be able to address the southern portion of the city, and 9th Street will be a big part of that. The fifth page is our actual destinations. The sign description and destinations. That was a big topic of discussion last week as well. Who's actually going to be on the sign? So we, we just include the actual signs and what's going to be on them, what the arrow is going to show. And um, we didn't do a tower. We kind of thought we could do a tower of, of how many people run, I mean, how many times each one is listed. But it's really just based on where they're located and where the sign is. So it's, um, that was, a, I know, a big discussion item last week. We can talk about that more after this. Uh, the, let's see what page are we on here. The next page is the down is the uh, downtown parking lot signs. Next page is our parking our existing parking lots in downtown. And after that is the the same parking lots basically with our new tried to be simplified numbering scheme for the downtown parking lots. The next page is our landscaping breakdown. This was a discussion item last week as well. Um, what kind of landscaping are we planning? Lots of native turf seed, some prairie seed, and then the trees there are anywhere from oaks to redbuds. And a thousand shrubs. So there are a lot of shrubs there. I guess we've just listed them out. If you have any questions about them, we can talk about that. And then the last two we saw more last week, just the kind of the general overall concept at the two interchanges. Having said that, we have a bid where we had three bidders, and all two out of the, uh, well, all three have worked for the city before and done a good job. We had some bid options that we've included here, like we talked about last week with the, t the stamped or tin concrete versus pavers, and we really feel like there was not a lot of cost savings at all with the with the stamped and tinted concrete and pavers are just they look better and they're easy they're uh, better for us to maintain as so we feel like that's a good that's consistent with what we still have on South Knight Street around the city as our pavers so we, we recommend we're going to recommend going with that and then we're also recommending allowing for some contingency we did this on South Knight Street because there seems to be a lot of um, and not maybe not a lot, but just we are, we have minor changes or minor um, change orders that the contractor requests that are very, I guess I, I wouldn't say they're minor to everybody, but they typically are sometimes a lot of them are minor. So we feel like that we could we'd like to be able to address those with a little contingency. This is our first landscaping project and our first uh, major wayfinding project, really. So we just feel like there's. There's definitely, this is new for KDOT even. This is their first, uh, KDOT is participating in this project. It's the first time they've ever done this in the state. So we feel like there's this is very cutting edge. And so we're proposing uh, utilizing this construction contingency. And Jason is in the code, is, can report as necessary to the commission on anything that's above and beyond or anything that he feels necessary to report. As well as if we had a large change that increases the scope or is over three percent, then we come to you with those with those changes. So I guess from a recommended from a staff recommendation, we've got four options. We can go with option one, and that is pretty much the normal option, I guess. Well, that's that includes everything. 
that's the concrete pavers, the poles, the wind socks, the, con the construction amount, and the splits with the city and the and KDOT funding. Second one is without the poles, and I guess that's the main one there. The third one is everything with a 3% contingency, and the fourth option is everything except the poles without the 3% with the 3% contingency. So we'd, we would recommend, um, city staff recommends number three, because that gives us the concrete pavers, the poles, the wind socks, and the, th and the contingency to get this project done at, in, the, in the time frame we've specified. And I guess at that, I'll just open up to questions. I'm sure there's a few, so we'll try and answer them. Questions of Mr. Stack? I've got a few here for you. Um, obviously, a lot of work has gone into this. Uh, on the, there was some discussion last week about the number of poles. Um, that it might not be visually the same as what the original design for that intersection shows. Could you tell us how many were bid between those two areas? Is it 20, 25 on each side? 25 so on each. You can't hear today. Can't 25, 25 on each side, yes. Okay. Um, and then on the landscape portion, do we have irrigation included where needed? We do not. No, we, um, this is trying to be the low impact natural nature type Kansas prairie grass and perennials that are in shrubs and trees that grow here so they just the water them in yeah, the beginning they will have to be watered yeah. yep okay. and we do have a a warranty we have our, our standard one-year warranty and that that's actually coming into play on another landscaping project in North Ohio where they planted them they understood that not all of them would live. You know, you plant them in the fall, you do the best you can, but then you come back in the spring and replace the ones that don't live. So that's that's understood here, and Brian, Brian is, is aware of that. Do you have uh, either a, a firm or a rough idea what the cost for the signage portion of the project is? And, and here's where that question comes up. We've talked about future phases. Um, that would kind of give an idea of what type of a, of a commitment we're looking for um, as this is definitely downtown focused. I have the breakdown here for just the signs. Ken, do you have a ballpark? I'm sorry, Ken is my project manager. He's here in the <laughs> yeah. audience, and I know he's worked these numbers more than I have. So, Are you saying you just want a price for the signs on this just particular phase? Yeah. yeah. Just the signs for this particular phase? Those or the engineer's things. estimate if we don't have the exact cost. We have the signs broken out into different uh, structures and how many of each structure. Their sign structure one is, is just one sign at, let's see, $7,200 $7, for one. That's the largest sign. The structure three sign is uh, $4,500. There are four of those. The structure six sign is, there's 35 of those, and there's, there's quite a few, quite a bit more of them, um, and they're around $2,300 a piece. And then the structure eight sign is $2,000. So depending on the signs and the type and the size of them, they range from around $7,000 to, to $2,000. And then our parking lot signs, the little ones that I showed you in here, those are the small signs. They're going, they're only uh, the uh, parking lot sign and post sign only is uh, 500 bucks a piece. There's 43 of those downtown, so that's it's quite a range, but. We could get a better breakdown. I mean, well, in, in individual breakdown, uh, it really wasn't where I was going. But no total. If, yeah, if we were saying the project was this, then landscaping was going to run about thirty percent, and signs I were going to run about seventy percent, or something along those lines to fill a little magnitude. Okay. But I don't want you to put put you uh, any more on the spot than what you can provide. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try here. We have. The bid price for landscaping, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay. So that that at least gives you a magnitude of yep yep of of where the landscaping comes in. Yep. We had around 
Ken, is $130,000 approximately of the median curb and things that normally wouldn't be as associated with just a sign project. Sign and landscaping, we had $130,000 of just of the median curb improvements, pavers, median curb, North and 9th Street, if you've been out there, the, the, yep. the curbs are asphalt and old. So we're that's just infrastructure improvements to the median. So if you take 130000 off off of that, of the total bid, which was six six 640000 I guess. Subtract the 130,000, and then and then the majority of that 275 is the landscaping. So that gives you at least some, some around 200. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm glad I brought this norm. This is good. <laughs> I have to break down. Do we have a time commitment from KDOT where we need to act within in order to receive their fund? matching we we don't I don't believe we have a concurrence of award and that has to go through their uh, process of they actually have to I guess make sure the bids are correct and go through the the process of the contractors being um, licensed with the state and they have concurred with the award but that did take up until right before the last study session basically so it took a couple weeks and so it's been a couple weeks since then so I don't think we have a time limit do we Kent They are. It's a it, yeah. It's it's a kind of a time project, and and we do have Thought. to. We would like to get it done this year, so that's mm -hmm. that's really the only rush. The signs take about six to eight weeks to fabricate, so we're looking at September already anyway to before we can actually start installing signs. Any other questions? I have a couple, but I didn't want to step on anybody. I just steps. what was the um, range on the cost of the wind socks? Okay. I know we went over that, but I don't have it here. We, we t that's a good question. That was talked about last week. Um, Bryant and Bryant assumed they would replace them once. So their, their cost is roughly um, double of everybody else's. And that's exa they were around $160 a windsock. And the other contractors were around 80 to 90 And they, they, they believe that that's because they are taking into account they're going to replace them at least once. Is it about a year is the max they thought they could get out of the windsock. And they they put in that they will be replacing them. So it's nice to hear that they're not they won't be surprised if we tell them to replace the wind socks. <laughs> and they thought they'd last about a year. That's correct. The right, but that's true. The wind socks are not <laughs> one hundred and sixty dollars a piece, okay. but that includes installing them and make and uh, just the time and effort to get it done. So wind socks we looked at. Uh, the wind socks at the airport gets they're anywhere from forty to a hundred dollars a piece. Okay. I just had a couple questions regarding the um, the phases. Kind of refresh my memory what our what our game plan is here. This first one was going to be for the Ninth Street in Crawford. Mm -hmm. um, being that I think this has been obviously on the. Uh, agenda for quite some time and we needed them like yesterday right. um, if this is successful the next phase I take it will include Ohio and possibly Magnolia yeah, or Schilling the, the first phase actually initially started just with Crawford and Ninth, and then we were fortunate I say we were fortunate this project took long enough that we went ahead and combined the downtown signs because there was no reason not to at that point as a kind of the next phase and KDOT stepped in and said we'll fund those as well so that was sort of a surprise a pleasant surprise to us um, but I would expect that Ohio and Magnolia would be the if I mean we had multiple phases there's a few signs that could go on shilling but the arterial streets Ohio is one of the busiest ones Magnolia is too so I would expect finishing out 9th Street looking at Ohio looking at Magnolia uh, some shilling. Um, there may be a few other uh, random locations that we want to look at, but those are probably the primary corridors we would focus on for the well, phasing. Well, you know, I'm just worried that the people that are, for example, the people that are westbound, if they don't know that there's all this signage is going to start at 9th Street downtown, they're going to get off at Ohio, and then they don't know how to get to the downtown or wherever. So I'm kind of worrying how far behind Ohio Street is going to be. And the same thing goes for the people that are on 135. When they, if they're coming up from the south, they might get off at Magnolia and are looking for signs or signage, not knowing that if they waited to Crawford, 
it was a little bit more distinct. So I'm a little bit concerned how long we're going to have to wait now to get to that next phase. Yeah, and, and really it's up to you and up to the funding. Once we uh, do this, we have unit rates, we can go back and look at the, the kind of the potential number on each of those corridors mm -hmm. and apply the unit rates and get an idea of what we think it would cost and bring that back to you and basically see where we're at budget-wise. So that could kind of be, you could kind of set that timeline. With regards to those on the interstate, though, they won't see these signs until they actually exit the interstate. Uh, so they won't know, for example, if they're on I-70, whether to get off at Ohio or 70, unless there's a billboard that would direct them otherwise. And that, was, that segues into my next question. Are we having a sign that says, Welcome to Salina, or this is Salina, or Salina, you're here now, or <laughs> whatever? Well, the, in, the, in the family of signs from Guidance Pathways, there's sort of one, somewhat of a traditional, some, some sort of larger, but a traditional sign, just like the family of signs you see here. And uh, the question we asked last time at the study session was, would you like more of a, uh, I called it like a, 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 a sign that's on the ground right. uh, um, and something nicer with whether it be rock or brick or something and uh, a nicer look. And so that's one thing that we said we're going to go back and, and try to get a rendering and a cost estimate and bring that back to you. So we're going to uh, look at withholding the welcome to Salina sign for the busier intersections until such time as we get that estimate and we can bring that back to you. And then you can decide if you want to move forward and if we have the resources. So we're going to kind of look at that um, separate from that. But the traditional welcome to Salina that's in this family could easily go on a, a street that uh, isn't um, one of the high traffic entrances. Uh, for example, you could put it on East Magnolia. It would be a good fit there. You probably wouldn't want the, the fancier sign there, whereas you might want the nicer sign, you know, North 9th Street or uh, Schilling is another street that comes up uh, coming into town or some of those locations. Magnolia is another example. Crawford. And this, um, this kindness from KDOT that we have, are we going to be able to reapply for these funds or if we, if we do well on this particular we case and they we like it? We can reapply. Uh, we, we received the, the grant in I guess December of of or in May of 05 or some time, 05 time frame so I don't know how long they would um, we, we actually have it budgeted for 2010, don't we, Jason? We're going to, next phase is 2010, I believe, in the CIP. Yeah, I think Broad it's 2011. Here. Is it 11? Okay. I well. think it's 2011, but ultimately right. it all depends on where we end up financially and if we have funds available, and that's mm -hmm. a priority. So yeah. depending on what you want to do, once we kind of figure out the cost of each of those other corridors, we can bring that to you, kind of go over it maybe in a study session, and then uh, figure out where we are financially and see what options you might and have. We can, and we can definitely look at applying again. There's I, no I think you're really going to like them. That's the thing. When you, see, when you see them go up, they're very, very nice signs. They're going to look very, very nice, and I think we'll kind of automatically want to have them everywhere if we can. So we'll try to, uh, by that time, hopefully then we'll be able to tell you what it will cost, how many other signs you'll need, and, and give you an idea. Those are my questions. Thank you. Any other questions <coughs> of staff, commissioners? If not, I'll open it up to public comment. I'm Phil Klima with Salina Downtown. Our office is at 205 West Ash. And as we said in the uh, City Commission study session last week, we really urge your support of this particular project. We find it crucial to the success and health of downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, if not, I'll bring it back to the commission for more questions. There you go. Um, in our study session, one of the one of the um, visual signs that we had had in print was had Rolling Hills Zoo um, on there as an example sign. Um, it's uh, in looking this over, um, we kind of listed a on, on uh, just a, a myriad of everything that people would maybe be looking for in Salina from the zoo to the steeple to the golf courses and uh, you know different different attractions and things in the area um, and my, my question would be are those deferred then uh, to phase two uh, I mean, the museum's on there. Downtown's going to have great representation, and I totally agree. It's very important. Um, but there's 
a, an awful lot of things within our community that people are going to be looking for that we don't have um, or that compete as private enterprises against a lot of the things that we are putting on these signs. So are we looking to do those in, in the future? Uh, were they a part of this phase on some of these signs and, and now they're not? Uh, because that question was raised, how, how are we approaching that in, in the future or were we planning to have some of those in this phase and we're deferring it now? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner, tip typically what we, we, well, what we tried to do here is not, we didn't want to try to get into a debate on the, from the private sector side of what would be potentially a, an attraction. It's a little bit hard to do because there are certain things that I think would be attractions and there are others that maybe could be argued that maybe aren't attractions. And so we tried to, you, you saw like South Ninth Shopping or Downtown, which has a lot of private attractions and tried to lump them together a little bit more. Rolling Hills in itself is a, is a good attraction. The problem is, is the way you get there from downtown may not be the prefer preferable way. And we talked about that a little bit. The interstate may be the best way to get there. So that one kind of came up as, is it really a good way to, to get, say, from State Street? Or, you know, is that where someone's going to be looking for it anyway? So that didn't really find its way just simply because it didn't seem to be the best route. Although eventually we could still come back to that. So I think when we finish putting these in, uh, that's something we're going to need to look at. Because I think part of the concern is, is that we know we already know that there are more individual things that we could put on the signs and we have signs space to hold which as you know gets into a big debate of what we're pointing to but I think we do need to probably look and see what would those be and then if that's something that you'd be interested in give you a chance to talk about it but quite honestly it's one of those roads that's a pretty long road because if you have 20 or 30 uh, private locations that you that that could possibly even be something that we'd want to point to but you can only put up you know, 10, 10 of them or something because as you get closer to the center of town what happens is your signs get bigger because you're adding more things as you get closer in um, it creates quite an environment for debating really what is the most important but uh, <coughs> we can certainly do that and in, and especially in the next phases it may be something especially like Ohio is a good example we can do that, but it's going to be a difficult process to do that. So in, in this phase, we really try to stay away from that as much as we possibly could. But recognizing, too, we may end up leaving something off that really needs to be there. Any other questions or follow-up? If not, um, before we bring it back to the Commission for Action, I just wanted to... Um, express my feelings with all of these options, okay. um, which is why we have study sessions, right. especially with the economy and with everything that's going on. I don't know if I am that crazy now about the polls and the socks. Okay. Um, I'm very glad that you did the work and the research, and I totally appreciate that staff also did the different, um, you know, with the concrete pavers, with the stamped and tinted, tinted concrete, and then the alternative with those poles and wind, uh, wind socks. Last year when we were discussing that and when we saw the, the drawing of what that would look, very cool. But I think that because of where they were going to be installed, that doesn't mean that that can't happen in the future. So um, I'm very appreciative uh, that you did do that as an alternative um, because of where we are right now with the economy and with costs. And I just, I think it's very important that we have signage. We've made it like, yesterday, which is what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to focus on that and make that as attractive and, um, and get right on it. I, I really want this bill to get moving quickly so we can move ahead and see if we can get the other phases done too, to draw people to our community. Uh, with the Aquatic Center popping up here next year, I think it's going to draw a lot of people to Salina, and I really want this done done definitely i want to be already on the next phase right. by the time that happens so um i i have a prerogative of changing my mind and i am um, i don't want the decorative poles or the wind socks at this time because of the cost involved but that's just my opinion and we will see what happens here um when i bring it back to a vote well i would agree with the, the mayor for different reasons uh, it's, um, I, I haven't liked the poll idea from the time it was originally proposed. Um, uh, there's something about uh, a, a basic stock of a tree stripped of all life um, 
sticking out of the ground that isn't warm, welcoming, uh, environmentally friendly, or anything else. And until we have the National Tetherball Championships in Salina, I don't know that they serve a real purpose. I think with uh, some of our other um, community art projects, uh, I think that this uh, the entrances of uh, the community ought to have something that is um, aesthetically pleasing and, and easy for all to sort of get. And this doesn't uh, meet that criteria, criteria for me. So uh, I, would, I would like to see option number four. Mr. Stack, without the poles, would it all just be planted to the natural grasses then? We just wouldn't have the poles sticking out Yeah, that's here. correct. Yeah, there's, there's going to be planting. The poles were going to be intermixed in those plantings, so it'll just be plantings now with no poles. Okay. No problem. Any other comments? If not, I'll bring it back to the Commission for Action. Mayor, I'd move we uh, award the wayfinding uh, streetscape and entryway enhancement project um, to Bryant and Bryant Construction of Halstead, Kansas. And I would recommend that we proceed with option number four that includes concrete pavers um, but without decorative poles and wind socks and also includes a 3% construction contingency. Um, uh, in the amount of six hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred ten dollars and three cents of which a maximum of four hundred five thousand five hundred sixty two dollars and fifty three cents will be funded by the city of salina and two hundred fifty three thousand nine hundred forty seven dollars and fifty cents will be funded by kdot second. second it's been moved and seconded that we award the uh, wayfinding project number zero five dash one five five zero to Bryant and Bryant Construction of Halstead, Kansas. Uh, option number four with the concrete pavers, the 3% uh, construction contingency, but without the decorative poles and wind socks. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. We have no other business. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>